Thank you for joining me. I'm Scott Ryan. Day after elections, and it's a tragic day. My heart is broken for my country in the direction it has gone, but I'm not surprised. And the video that I'm posting below here at tableofwisdom.com, I'm going to show you, if you want to skip forward to about the four-minute point in my March video called Obama Diligently pushing for state secession, I pointed out where we were going. It, there was something spiritual that was taking place in this country. And that's why I pretty much guaranteed that we were going to be in this place right now today. And it's not productive to point this out for the sake of um, saying I told you so or gloating. I mean, I... I was very much against Romney as the candidate, and uh, I actually went against my own contentions back then. I, I pledged not to vote for him, and I did vote for him, and I and I did stay out of the way. I didn't campaign for him, but I can't. I, I worked hard campaigning against Obama this primary, and I'm, I wish to God that I had been wrong. But it's been something that's really been in my heart. I'm not, I'm not, you know, <laughs> some kind of claiming to be some prophet. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, all of us who are in Christ. And since this guy first got elected in 2008, I've been writing about uh, how there's something spiritual going on. And his, this man is here. He is the consequence of sin. This is not an accident. I believe that God has handed us over to our enemies. And it's, you know, we have to be broken sometimes before we can actually come to the place of repentance. You know, we've been praying a lot and talking about, you know, God bless America and quoting the scriptures to the extent that they serve our purpose, but without requiring us to sacrifice and to actually not only repent for our sins, but as the scripture continues to say, we all ignore. If my people are, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from him in heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. We are a nation that has not turned from our wicked ways. Many in the church do not want to talk about sin. Sin is not talked about from the pulpit. We're more interested in getting larger crowds and building larger buildings and generating more revenue. And that is the problem here. The church, uh, the divorce rates in the church are higher, if not as, maybe as high as, I've heard higher recently than that of the uh, non-Christian world. Uh, there is a real self-serving aspect of the church and, and the Bible talks about how in the end times that there would be a great shaking of the house. We have this feeling of entitlement as, as part of it's being Americans, being Christians in America. We are so spoiled and have this feeling that we, we think that we are unique in, in, in the eyes of God and we're better than these Christians who are suffering, persecuted and murdered around the world every day because we live on this hunk of land. So we can just go on in our debauchery and go on in our selfishness and go on in using God's word to support what we want and to live the way we want. We're going into a place of much pain. And I'm not even going to go as far... I'll take a little disagreement with... Uh, I mean, I, everybody wants to be optimistic, but I hear... I heard uh, Christians talking about uh, on the radio this morning, you know, about how sometimes it's harder, you know, we have to go through hard times and everything. That does not guarantee us that we're ever, ever going to get back what we had in this country. That does not guarantee us that in this country, even if we turn from our wicked ways at this point, that we are not going to suffer the rest of our lives the consequences of our sins. It brings to mind a book that I uh, have seen out on the market by Ray Comfort and it's called God has a plan for your life enticing words and then it has a picture of Saint Stephen being stoned to death 
I didn't even read the book, but just seeing that cover really hit home. God is, does not care about this temporal world. Our pea brains are so small. We think that this is so important. It is important to us right now and here. God gave, blessed us with the ability to determine uh, self-government. But we have sinned. We have blown it. We have broken families for generations that to, to, to actually hit the reset button, you can't just make all these people all of a sudden become instantly inculcated with, all, with the truth. Many of them don't even want to hear it. But going back to that book cover, God cares about our souls. He is about eternity. His promises might not be in this world. We may have to, and, and the late Chuck Colson in a video just months before he died, talked about how it pains him as a former military captain to say this, that we might be forced into civil disobedience as Christians. It was a powerful, powerful video. And I'll post that here too. Uh, it's within a, another video that I produced several months ago. It's chilling. But, but I, when I'm pointing out the video of my predictions, how I thought that Obama was going to win this and that it seems spiritual and it seems inevitable. The fact that, that, I mean, God seemingly blinded the eyes of our Republican Party so that we went and did everything that we could to lose this election. Approached it in the wrong way. Mocking the people like Santorum who were emphasizing the fact, the spiritual aspect of our plight. It's all meant to be. And going forward to build on that, I'm going to tell you this man has been hell-bent upon forcing secession in this country from day one. Nobody wants to talk this way. I mean, it used to be radical. To talk about where we are now, if you would have predicted this 10, 15 years ago, people would have called you a conspiracy theorist and laughed you out of the room. But I'm telling you right now, with Obama's second term, and as he has said, he's going to have a lot more power, as he promised Putin. This guy, positioning himself as Lincoln, as the second coming of Lincoln, from day one, in 2000, actually in 2007, when he was campaigning, trying to give the media all the ammo that they need to make these ridiculous comparisons. He is setting it up. The media is setting it up. Did you see the timing of this new Steven Spielberg, Abraham Lincoln movie coming out now? They're making the Lincoln-esque. They're getting it in the minds of the people, and I'm telling you why. Nobody wants to secede from the Union. Nobody wants, God forbid, civil war in this country but Obama. And he is going to, I'll tell you, there's going to be a lot of evil forced upon us in many ways. And I can just tell you one. I'll tell you one in itself that is enough. I go to a large church here in Florida. There are many Christian churches here in the South that uh, are going to see homosexuals coming into their church and demanding to be married and Barack Obama in, in his Lincoln-esque actually the anti-Lincoln but he's going to draw a parallel to himself and emancipate the homosexuals and demand a federal emancipation. We've been seeing the dominoes fall state by state in this country how homosexual, quote-unquote, marriage is becoming uh, the law of the land. But there are going to be homosexuals moving from state to state, and they're going to put this under interstate commerce. They're going to abuse the 14th Amendment, and they are going to use this as the equivalent of slavery preceding the Civil War. And homosexuals are going to come into my church, and they are going to come into your church and they are going to demand that your pastor and if you're a pastor they're going to demand that you marry them and this is where you are faced with the unenvi unenvi unenviable choice of bowing to their idol the state 
bowing to Obama, were being thrown into the fiery furnace. This will be your Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This will be your lion's den, Daniel in the lion's den moment. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's where the state in which you live is going to be most critical. And I've been writing this for years. Because the last bit of protection will be by your state legislature. If you are in one of the God-fearing contiguous states of America. There are some God-fearing states that are not contiguous with the Bible Belt in the South. If I were going to relocate, and I've been saying for years, and I'm glad to hear others, uh, Glenn Beck has been talking about that lately. If I were going to move to a, to a God-fearing state, I would go to South Carolina first. That is the number one conservative state. If you look at the co congressional representation, that is the place to be. Or, or Georgia, or Texas. Florida, believe it or not, has been a conservative state, but we have parasites. We have a parasite problem from the north that are coming here in the Palm Beach and Miami-Dade counties that are really screwing up our election. But our state legislature and our governorship have been Republican-controlled for many years for decades. I've lived here 17 years, and it's always been a Republican-dominated legislature. And when push comes to shove, I think the parasites will be leaving and going back north because they're not going to find it very friendly. I mean, we have our turnpike, our state turnpike, ladies and gentlemen, is called the Ronald Reagan Turnpike because of our state legislature about 10 years or so ago naming it thus. But Texas... Florida, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina. North Carolina's got another parasite problem. The, the halfbacks, many of the New Yorkers, after the hurricanes here, left Florida and decided to go halfway back to New York. And they've gone in there and polluted. They, they, what they do is they ruin their states. They, they vote communists. They, they elect communists in their obstinance, their perversion. And, and then they destroy their states and complain about the taxes, so then they move south where the taxes are lower, and then they repeat it. And everywhere they go, they're like a plague. But I believe that Florida will be uh, restored. But nevertheless, this is going to happen. You better believe it. This guy is going to force secession. It wouldn't be well enough. He wouldn't let well enough alone. There are people that say, well, hey, we could just take the South and give them the North, and they could even have the better parts. They can have most of the country. Just let us live in peace. That doesn't work. Every communist regime fails because communism is evil. It is a plague on humanity, and it doesn't work. It fails. It is evil. It is satanic. It is destined to fail, but they always blame it on some other place, some other country. It failed because that country existed. They blamed the communists, the Soviets blamed America. The existence America must be destroyed. Marx said that America must be destroyed. So you might think that we could just chalk it up to irreconcilable differences and we can just live in peace our way and they theirs. You sell everything, come here. That will not happen. Evil is what evil does. Evil does as evil is. Barack Hussein Obama, the Nancy Pelosi's, the Chuck Schumer's, the Alan Grayson's, that disgrace, the Harry Reid's, they cannot live. They cannot live if they know that there is somebody near them that is living a happy life, obedient to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. People who are working and saving to make a better life for themselves and their families, they cannot live with that until they know that they have those people subjugated. There will be no amicable separation. So when your states do what they have to do to protect you, you can count upon the evil to launch troops against your state. And then it'll come down to what will how educated are those kids in that military? 
Obama has been assaulting the military, making it into a experimental left-wing microcosm for the last several years. And not just eliminating don't ask don't tell but now he is fighting he has been fighting for homosexual marriage and allowing homosexuals to bunk together in the military can you imagine that you're out at war and that's what you've got to be dealing with it's sick and that that sob that evil son of a bitch sent here from satan himself is is already been working on it he's been setting it up believe me He is here to dismantle this country. He is here to destroy this country. He is succeeding. And God has allowed it. And we may... We we don't have a choice, people. Are you going to live? Are you going to bow to the idols? Are you going to kill babies if you're a doctor? When Obama demands it? Are you going to marry homosexuals? When you're a minister? When God told you in this abomination? As Luther, Martin Luther said... Here I stand. I can do no other. Resistance isn't an option. It's an obligation. When Obamacare kicks in and the real crap starts hitting the fan, you're going to be faced with a choice. And this son of a bitch is going to be launching. When your states step up and do what they have to do, everybody's going to do what they have to do. Satan's going to do what he's going to do because he's got a plan for your life and he's got a plan for this country. And God has a plan for your life and God has a plan for your eternity this country may be in rubbles but your eternity is what what is at stake here as well you do not bow to those idols so we will do and i'm just telling you what's going to happen i'm not a prophet it's just i know it i know it god didn't come to me in a burning bush and say scott and i didn't hear this audible voice i've just known this from day one the holy spirit resides. We all know this in our hearts. We've known in our hearts what's going on for years. We've been living in denial, but we have no choice. And we are, are, if you live in a state that's willing to take a stand and protect you against the encroachment, the unconstitutional encroachment against a federal government that is usurping power that is not theirs. If you are fortunate to live in a state that will do what it has to do to protect you, I'm just telling you that's going to happen, but I'm going to tell you what's next. The, The lying evil deceiver in Washington, D.C., who just was re-elected by degenerates, blind degenerates, is going to use that military that he is undermining to come in against your state. That's the bottom line. But I would rather die than betray my God and my soul. I have no choice. Here I stand. I can do no other. What is a life of being a slave? What is a life of doing evil? This is what an American is. An American will stand for those constitutional rights endowed by our creator. The ones against which Obama, the evil one, rails and attacks. The fruits are clear. There has never been a moral clarity to this degree in my lifetime of what we have to do. We will live in peace. We will live constitutionally. We will obey God until they come. And when they come, we will be waiting. We will not attack anybody. We don't want hostility. But we know what evil is. We know what evil does. Evil won't be content to be evil where they are. Evil will make sh- they will not be content until they attack. They've got a plan against God. Satan is deceived. He is at war with God. And he will come in and he will not be happy until he has the pastors bowing to him. Until he has everybody serving him. This is what's in store, people. Wake up. Are you waking up? Is it starting to become real? Because it is real. Nobody's going to wake you up from this nightmare. I'm telling you where we're going. Embrace it. Don't be deluded. The biggest danger to this country, what has hurt this country more, is optimism in a sense. Because optimism, this notion that we are Americans, therefore it's always going to end like a Hollywood blockbuster and, and everything's going to be okay. That isn't the way life works. God didn't give us that promise. Eternity will end that way if you obey him and serve him. If I obey him and serve him, we have a choice to make. Thank you for joining me. I'm Scott Ryan. God bless you.